Okay, let's catch up. Last time we took you to some well-known casual restaurants in Buenos Aires. We had a goal of eating at all of the spots on the 50 best list. So if that meant four tasting menus in a row, then so be it. We can buy stretchy pants, but we can't always pop over to Buenos Aires and score these reservations. YOLO, am I right? We are standing outside of Tegi, where we are having dinner tonight, and this chef, this is his namesake restaurant, and he is known for contemporary Argentinian cuisine. Don't really know what to expect because it's a tasting, so. And what you can expect is a nondescript entrance on a graffiti-covered wall. Our taxi driver waited until we were ushered inside because he wasn't even sure that we had given him the correct address. But upon walking in, you'll be greeted by, well, for lack of a better way to describe this, an army of gorgeous male models turned waitstaff. Yay! When done right, these four or five hour meals can transport you to another place, seemingly bending time and taking you on a whirlwind food tour. Tasting menus are like a culinary safari. Nothing is guaranteed. The ingredients depend heavily on what's in season, and sometimes you end up with a rare find. It often becomes a case of biological happenstance, and we love the experiences that they offer. Everything in the restaurant, including the people, are beautiful, and the food is out of this world. If we could only eat at one tasting menu while in Buenos Aires, this would be our choice. We also heard they occasionally do a pop-up restaurant in the summer at a vineyard near the mountains in Mendoza. Now wouldn't that be something to experience? We're continuing our tasting menus in Buenos Aires. We are here at Chile tonight. I don't know that much about this chef, so I am actually just really excited to see what he has to offer. I know that he's really into um, local produce so yay, that's really fun. And um, just modern Argentinian food. Once seated, we discovered that the ingredients were sourced from so many different parts of Argentina that they included a map with our menu. It was fun to reference it throughout our dinner. The restaurant was very modern and the presentation was probably what we enjoyed most. This is not a dig on the food at all, but we were just entertained all evening by the beauty of the dishes and how the plating required us to interact with the food. I think the footage speaks for itself, so please enjoy the visual feast. We have another tasting tonight. We are going to Chef Gonzalez Aramburu's restaurant. It's uh, his namesake restaurant. And this guy's really interesting. He's worked for um, quite a few celebrity chefs. He's worked for Balud and Trotter and Robichon and for the chef um, whose restaurant we went to a couple of nights ago, Tegi. Um, it's gonna be a long one if this tasting could be a book. I think it's going to have about 17 or 19 chapters, so I think it's going to be a long night, but very enjoyable. While Aaron Buru has recently not been included in the 50 best restaurant list, it is still considered to be one of the best restaurants in the city by many. It was definitely one of our favorite meals, just behind Teggy for the best tasting experience in the city. All of the tables in the dining room face the open kitchen, giving you an excellent view of the chefs as they create the amazing dishes. I really enjoyed watching the amount of detail and attention that went into every little bite that we enjoyed. There are only about 10 tables in this space, so it made me feel very special.
And last, but definitely not least, we went to El Bacchiano. This restaurant has been on the 50 best list since 2013, but had a dubious description that mentioned it focused on exotic meats from around South America, which definitely gave us pause. We've both grown up eating game, but exotic meats makes me think that we'll be eating something I'd rather donate to monthly to protect on the endangered list than have for dinner. But we needn't have worried, because not only was the meat perfectly prepared and far less off the wall than anticipated, the vegetables and fish were fantastic as well. Perhaps their best known dish is the llama tartare, and while I didn't have it on my pescatarian tasting, Eric said it was really flavorful. And in South America, you see llama on the menu quite often. We had a nice chat with the sommelier and walked away so glad we'd spent our final night in Buenos Aires here, having a memorable meal and falling further in love with the city. Thanks for following along with our Buenos Aires food adventure. Join us next time when we take our new figures on the road and travel to the bottom of the world, to Ushuaia, as we begin our Patagonia adventures. Great. We are this bus going by. <laughs> we are continuing our tasting menu theme for Buenos Aires. We are on our third one now. Arr. <laughs> we are continuing our sorry, I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs>